First things first, I'm a brand new bunny mom. I've only ever had cats and fish, but I've always wanted a rabbit. But I kept staying on the fence because I didn't know anyone with one to be able to learn by observing them taking care of it. And my main concern is would they be happy with me and have a good life? And any time I went to the county fair, I would always look at the livestock from the 4-H club. And the rabbit I fell in love with the most were the mini rexes. And I thought that would be the breed I would get if I were to ever get one. There was one time years ago when I was in the pet store and there was a solid black velvet rex that I was about to get. But by the time I could find an employee to assist, this random kid came out of nowhere and pointed that he wanted it without even interacting with it. And the mom said they wanted it, even though I was standing there the whole time and the employee was stuck in the middle. Because even though the employee was there for me first, that mom spoke up out of turn. So I just left and I bet that helicopter mom never bought that bunny. And I never went back to that store again. I figured maybe the universe was saying no. And I just kept looking at bunnies from afar. Like the one that came into my yard. Or the ones my Canadian friend feeds in his yard. Even in the middle of winter. That should be good enough, right? But a few months ago, one of my longtime friends found this bunny outside in his neighborhood. I think she's an English spot, even though she doesn't have any spots or the black muzzle. But if I'm wrong, let me know what breed you know she is because I have no other way of knowing. He asked around if it belonged to anyone, but no one claimed it. It wasn't safe to be free roaming outside, so he took her in. He was doing his best in taking care of her, but it was all becoming too much with taking care of dogs, chickens, and two kids. He offered her to me and I asked him several times to make sure his kids would be okay with me having the rabbit because I wouldn't want them to be upset that their dad gave away their pet. So after I became aware that I was going to be a bunny mom, I bought a book, I started getting ready to bring the rabbit home, trying to find all the information I could from other experienced sources to help me make sure I'm giving her the best life possible. The cage my friend had her in had shelves, and she liked being on the top, so I made a shelf for my cage so that she wouldn't lose that. Then I put in the iconic IKEA bed if she wanted to sleep in it, but to also help her get up to the shelf. A litter box in the corner with hay above it since everything says they like to eat and poop at the same time. Filled it with horse pellet bedding for the litter since they say shavings are bad. A water bowl because they said they shouldn't drink from bottles because they could get dehydrated. A small bowl for pellets, since that's not supposed to be the majority of their food, and some toys to fling around to not be bored. A lot recommended these little plastic baby keys. So what have I learned from my first week of being a bunny mom? As soon as I brought her home, I put her in the cage and she immediately went underneath the Ikea bed. She was 100% unsure of me. She wouldn't eat the hay, she wouldn't eat the pellets or drink the water. I managed to get her to eat when I put out some turnip greens, kale, and cilantro. She would get out from under the bed if I left the room, but still hung out underneath the shelf and behind the bed. Still did not want to go anywhere past two feet into the cage. When I woke up the next morning, I didn't see any poops, but she had peed, but not in the litter box. So I moved the litter box to that spot. I still wasn't sure if she was drinking water, so I added the water bottle that my friend had had for her too, so that she could at least have two different water sources to pick from, whichever one she prefers. When I arrived back home later that day, I saw she had used the litter box to where I had moved it. There were no peas or poops anywhere except for in the box. I was like, heck yes. But also, was that too easy? Should I be skeptical? I'll tell you more about that in a few. So since she was still hiding under the Ikea bed, I was trying to befriend her with treats. She would take them from me but would still retreat. So I took out the bed and put in the house that she was used to for my friend so that she didn't have to be cramped under the bed. She goes into the rooms, but I haven't seen her get on the second floor yet and still not on the shelf I made her. I put a treat there to encourage, but it's still there untouched. Throughout the week, she pretty much stays underneath the shelf and anything beyond two feet is her no-go zone. I even attached her X-Pen and have been opening the door for her to leave and showed her I put treats out there for her to explore, but she would still not leave that cage at all. I'm not picking her up and forcing her in there. I want her to do it by herself. I was then thinking maybe she just doesn't like walking on the plastic floor of the cage, and since she wasn't using the shelf, I moved the rug from there and put it on the floor to see if maybe that would change anything. 
But once I did that, she started moving the litter box out of her way. At first, I thought maybe it was because I had added a ball to play with and maybe it got moved while she was playing. But then I figured maybe she just wanted more room to stretch out. So next, I moved the litter box to the opposite corner of the cage. I also added a carrot-shaped dish for her greens because I noticed whatever she wasn't eating was getting dried up and hard to peel off the floor. And I changed her water dish reservoir to her cute cabbage bowl because I still wasn't convinced if she was drinking water or not. But moving the litter box was a mistake because when I came home later that day, she had pooped in the box, but there were also too many poops in front of it because it's in that no-go zone of hers. I moved the litter box back to her safe zone, and as I was moving the hay holder back in place, I realized I haven't been replacing the hay in this thing, and everything was saying hay is 80% of their diet, but this looked untouched. She poops on the hay in the litter box like a nest, and once in a while I'll see her eating some hay from there, but never from the holder. So then I took the hay from the holder and placed it inside the box where she's not pooping and hopefully still poops in the back and eats the hay in the front. I was thinking of getting one of those combo litter boxes where all the food sources are connected to the box so she has to be in the box to eat and poop, but I can't spend over $100 not knowing if she's going to utilize it. But I might have to figure something out. So with the litter box back in position with space to stretch, I wanted to encourage her to use the whole cage and not just stay in her two feet zone. And since the house is taking up too much space and she's not using it to climb to the shelf, I took the house out and added another rug so there would be no plastic to walk on and put in a cut out cardboard box as her hidey house. After I did this, I finally noticed she was drinking from the cabbage bowl and she was using her new hidey house, but then she was digging on the rug inside it and picked up the plastic toy keys away from it and making all kinds of ruckus. I wasn't sure if she liked it or was irritated, but I left it in there overnight. When I checked the next morning, it was moved like she doesn't want it there and more poops where they shouldn't be. So I took that hidey house out and put back her mansion and she's not digging or causing a ruckus anymore. All rabbits are different, so what works for yours might not work for mine and vice versa. But as of right now, after my first week of being a brand new bunny mom, I learned that she won't eat a fresh strawberry unless I cut it up first. I bought a variety of greens, but most of it spoiled too fast because I didn't prep it all correctly, so hopefully I do better for week two. She likes turnip greens, but when I try to place my order for the upcoming week, it's out of stock, so I picked mustard greens this time. But then when my order arrived, it didn't have any of the greens I ordered. So now I have to place another order with someplace else. So who knows what week two is going to have. Maybe just spring mix. She liked dill at first, but wouldn't eat it every day, so I didn't buy it for week two. I wouldn't buy the hay holder again. I was worried that she might chew the fabric and that it wouldn't last long, but it's the complete opposite by not even touching it. Don't buy a $17 rabbit book because all the bits and pieces can be found on the internet and you'll have to experiment to see what works and what doesn't anyway. I'm glad I bought the cabbage bowl for her water dish. I'm still iffy on the carrot bowl because she just pulls the greens out of it and eats them off the floor anyway. She hasn't liked any of the toys I bought so far. But I bought a snuffle mat to try next, but it hasn't arrived yet. She's still a little shy, but will come near me if she thinks I have treats, but takes a step back if I don't have any. I've been able to pet her a few times and rewarded her with freeze-dried banana chips. I wish I could keep giving her those, but everything says to limit sugar items. And now I just need to figure out how to get her to go onto the shelf or get into the X-Pen so that she doesn't continue to stay in her two feet zone when she has lots of space to be in. As of the recording of this video, I currently put her greens out in the pen and left the cage open all day, but no results yet. I'm looking forward to what week two brings, and hopefully she gets more comfortable. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you what her name is. It's Alice Pooper. I like the musician Alice Cooper, and since she has the black ringed eyes and is a poop machine, it's a perfect fit. Okay, bye! Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big.